Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to dive back into actual continuity. I was a surprise. I thought this was just one of those crossovers that didn't really have a lot to do with continuity. But this is very much entrenched in Marvel continuity. And that is Rune versus Venom. This book, it's 48 pages, um, and it, it features a character from the Malibu comic series, Rune. Um, he was in a couple issues, I think, by the time this came out, so he was still a relatively new character. He showed up in the Marvel Universe, and the Annihilist creature from Fantastic Four like exiled him into like the negative zone and stuff, or somewhere into another dimension. And so this is him emerging from that dimension and finding himself his own symbiote. Uh, it's really good, actually. I got to say, uh, when I was rereading this, I was like, hey, this is pretty decent. And it's a shame because it's a Malibu crossover they're never, most likely never going to be able to reprint this in any form. I hope that's not true. I hope we see a reprint of it someday. So if you want this book, you're going to have to go find it on eBay or somewhere online or at your local comic store. You're going to have to find it there. But it is good. It's actually pretty decent. It picks up right where Planet of the Symbiotes ended, like a couple months after Planet of the Symbiotes, and then right where Sinner Takes All uh, ended. So that's where Anne Weying, uh, you know, Eddie's former wife and now kind of on again, off again love interest, um, she actually is a big part of this story so we get to see a lot of Annie in here which was I was not expecting that was pretty cool uh, so uh, so yeah if you're an Anne Wang fan this is a good story to get and it kind of lends into like it, it fits perfectly I don't know if the writer of this book knew what their plans were with Anne years later where they were gonna you know probably kill her like yeah, obviously we know in the comics she she killed herself um, so we I don't know if this writer I don't even know if it's possible this writer could have known that was gonna happen but it if you read this and then read the issue where she she died it makes a lot of sense like because she has she struggles in this one it's her having nightmares about the symbiote uh, remembering what it was like to bond with it as she venom uh, the power of it the hunger so she now understands eddie on a different level and she's using that to maybe reconnect with them but then also she gets uh, taken by this rune venom character so what's cool is like so you know going back to planet symbiotes that's where this story kind of starts off that's the breadcrumbs of it a, a lone symbiote survived. So when uh, you know Venom uh, teamed up with Scarlet Spider and Spider-Man and they released the blast or whatever and it destroyed all the symbiotes and it reduced Carnage back down to regular size, um, all those other symbiotes were pretty much killed and wiped out and evaporated. And that was the choice Eddie had to make with the symbiote. Like, we have to choose to kill our race so that the human race can survive. And that was a sacrifice that the symbiote was willing to uh, make. And also Eddie, as someone who felt disconnected from humanity, was making in order to reconnect with humanity. So it was really good. I actually like playing the symbiotes a lot. If you haven't read it and you know, or if you haven't read it in a while, go back and revisit it. It's actually really good. And so in that though, the symbiotes built a giant stargate. Well, it looks like they built a second stargate, a smaller one, and that's where this symbiote was. So there's a second symbiote, or not only a second symbiote, a second venom type symbiote. It's all black, and it's that's what the book starts off. You think it's venom attacking people, and there's like these uh, bad guys, you know, uh, grabbing this woman in the alley. They're gonna rob her, and then you know this. Venom shows up with wings and he instead of eating the bad guys he eats the woman and uh, devours her sucks her blood and drains her and so this particular symbiote seems to want to kill women uh, so it's a it's really dark you know this story and so that's why it goes after Anne so it looks like all of its recent victims were women and it's been leaving the name Venom everywhere to put the blame on Venom and it even says look it says we are the dark god <laughs> and it's got wings and everything but that is not actually Venom that's Rune who is like this vampire bat creature guy from another dimension from the Malibu universe uh, that's him being uh, possessed by this symbiote so after the planet symbiotes all the symbiotes were wiped out except Venom and Carnage, obviously, and the Life Foundation symbiotes, but this symbiote too, uh, who goes by the name Ravenous, it looks like. And so Ravenous is, uh, you know, is kind of the focus of this. So he's uh, blaming everything on Eddie Venom. And they even, it's cool, they even show Captain America with a symbiote on him uh, from, you know, like the Planet of the Symbiotes uh, you know, battle and stuff. So, yeah, they very much entrench, uh, entrench this with uh, continuity at the time. Dum Dum Dugan, who was running S.H.I.E.L.D. at that time in the comics, uh, taking over for Nick Fury temporarily, he's a part of this story. I mean, this is very much set in the Marvel Universe in the 90, mid-90s, mid to mid late 90s. And uh, so we have Anne Wang there sitting on the chair. Good to see Annie there, which is great. Um, 
and yeah, so that's what the story is. So the Rune character, he's, he, you know, he came out of his dimension. The Stargate opened up. The one symbiote was like, I'm going to use this to go back to Clintar. There's more of us there. You know, not all of us were wiped out. So when he's opening up, opening up the Stargate, that's when Rune comes out. And he's like, hey, I was banished by Annihilus. How am I here? And then so the symbiote takes over Rune and uses him to get revenge on Venom. He's like, you know what? Before I do leave, before I go back home, since the opportunity has presented itself for me to have a host in, in this vampire creature thing called rune i'll bond with it become ravenous and we're going to blame eddie uh because he, he was a traitor uh, eddie or venom betrayed our race and wiped a lot of us out to save a stupid human and the human race so this symbiote sees it as you know a, a treacherous thing and so this symbiote attacks you know and, uh, and decides to grab Anne and then you know k kidnap her bond with her and then lure eddie into a trap but Eddie's smart in this one. I like what the writer did here. Actually, the writer, and let me let me give uh, proper names to everybody because uh, I don't. I, I want to give credit here. We have uh, Chris Ohm is the uh, the writer of this book, and then we have Greg Luzniak and Mark Pacella and Gabriel Gecko. So three artists on this book. Uh, but it's pretty seamless. They all work really well together, and it looks like one pretty unique style throughout the whole book. So very well done. You know, I mean, sometimes you can tell, oh, this is someone else's work, but it's very subtle. Uh, these guys worked really well together on this book. And there's some great pages in it, like Venom tearing up these robots that, from S.H.I.E.L.D. that get sent in to fight him. And he's like, hey, we're not the murderer. Like, you know, who's, who's murdering who? There's even this great shot where Venom puts his fist through a dude's head. So Venom totally kills people in this one. Like these guards show up and Venom decimates all of them and kills them. But he tries to get answers from them. He's like, why, why are you doing this? You know, tell me. And they're like, well, someone look, who looks like you, I guess, maybe it's not you, is killing women. And Venom's like, I would never do that. I would never go on a hunt for women like that and, and do that. Um, and then he gets, starts seeing, um, or Anne starts seeing vision. She's having nightmares. And that's when she gets taken over by, uh, by you know the runes are ravenous i guess so eddie goes to her apartment he sees that um there was like a break-in or something and he's using actual journalist skills in this one he, even though you don't see him do it they kind of say and don't show but i think they did that for page count because they had to move the story along but eddie does talk about how he's using different contacts and he's using different people and he made a few phone calls to find out what's going on he found out where you know he knows where Anne lives he saw that uh, her place was turned upside down and destroyed and the word venom written everywhere and then because Eddie is bitten by rune venom here uh, ravenous uh, Eddie gets bitten and fights the creature um, now the creature has poison inside Eddie that Eddie uh, the symbiote can uh, kind of filter through and and there's like sources or maybe a codex maybe uh but they don't call it that back here in this time period because that wasn't a thing yet um but uh you know the 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 ravenous suit who bites into eddie um he's he leaves a trace of himself in there so now the symbiote is like oh we can detect where he is because we have a sample of him inside of us with the poison so let's you know go track him down so that's what eddie does and shield descends on him too and they all get in a big fight and uh, you know rune venom or ravenous is actually taking over Anne for a while so eddie pulls his punches to you know so that it was a tactic to get eddie to like not fight back but then eddie uh, you know separates Anne from the rune character and then rune separates himself from the symbiote eventually too and then rune takes the symbiote and bites into it and actually feeds off it and drains it completely almost like it does a human it drains of its of its blood but the rune is not a typical vampire so when he bit into the symbiote he was able to drain it of its you know whatever keeps it alive and then he bottles it up and like it's almost like a piece of paper it it kind of brittles and he balls it up and then eats it and then he's able to absorb the strength that comes from the symbiote but the symbiote is officially dead so yeah so there's a way that they wipe out the symbiote and then at the end rune jumps back into the stargate and uh, goes back to his home world and uh but not before you know fighting venom a little bit and getting you know some extra arm action some wing action in there uh but then eddie saves Anne and the, uh, saves the the shield agents too and dum dum dugan and then that's when uh you know the the ravenous suit gets eaten by rune and then rune disappears he goes into his own universe again so uh yeah pretty good and then at the end it just you know kind of shows you some other malibu characters and then you know the dark god goes back into his realm and then Anne and uh you know eddie have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation at the end so yeah pretty good rune versus venom i gotta say i was surprised i, I was like oh this is just going to be one of those cheesy 90s crossovers not going to be a lot to it you know it's just not going to be a lot of uh you know canon or you know it's not going to feel like it's part of the universe 
this straight up was part of the universe. So it's a shame that it's not easy to find, but if you can find a copy, pick it up if you're a Venom fan. It's a lot of fun. And look, wings. Yeah, right? Uh, so yeah, we got some Venom wings in there. Although it's not Venom who actually has the wings in this one. Venom showed wings in like uh, the Nova issue where he you know, saved uh, Nova. But um, And then another time he saved his sister, he had the wings too. But in this one, it's the, the Rune symbiote has the wings because Rune himself has actual wings. So uh, so yeah, it's not the exact same thing as what Donnie and them are doing, uh, but it's still pretty cool looking. It's a neat visual, right? So anyway, those are my thoughts on this. If you've read it before, please let me know what you think down below. It's a really fun book, I thought, uh, but if you have a different opinion, you've read it, let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation as always down there. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, I'll have some more comic book stuff coming up. I think I'll have, uh, I'm going to do the Sin Eater Amazing Spider-Man number 44 issue that just came out and also Venom the End. And then we're going to get into uh, Beyond with Matt Gargan and then Thunderbolt versus Moon Knight. And then after that, uh, going into August, we'll be getting back into Flash Thompson for sure. So a lot of stuff coming up on, uh, you know, on the show for you guys. So I hope you guys are enjoying them. And if so, subscribe so you don't miss out. See you all in the future. Peace.